absolutely given us one little egg. So this morning, uh, Gemma's at work again. I'm going to be dropping Abigail off at my mum's house and uh, and Sarah is going to pick her up and take her out with the girls to a place called um, Hodsock Priory. That's the one. So uh, she's going to have a good day there and I'm going to go to the unit and the first port of call today is to repair the ice machine. Apparently it's been playing up. So this is the ice machine that we have up at the pub and Stuart tells me that it's only producing like pathetically small ice cubes and if you pour water into the top section here then the ice cubes dramatically increase in size so it makes me think there's a block nozzle or pipe somewhere so I'm going to take this apart and take you on the journey as we explore the Andrew James Ice Maker about £100 on eBay. Worth a fix that, right? So I've unshrouded the whole of the ice machine. I've found the pump and the inlet. So I've put some water in there. I've turned it on and it appears nothing's happening. So I don't know whether it's waiting for some type of input. There we go. I've just pressed the button again. There are two sensors on here and they need to reflect back at each other in order to... Uh, there we go, look. I pointed the two, probably an infrared sensor, at the other one. And now they're communicating. We have pumpage! Quickly filled that cup. Well, there's no blockage. That's for sure. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's about as exciting as it's going to get. So one thing I have noticed is the compressor's not on. Right, I've reconnected all of the electrical connections, giving it a real good clean inside and out. And as you can see it's forming ice cubes within your front of your very eyes it is quite amazing how quickly these cubes have formed on this piece of steel I think we've cracked it folks, so I'm going to take this ice machine back up to the shop, uh, put it on the side for Stuart with a note saying, friggin' fixed buddy, <laughs> and uh, hopefully he'll be able to chill down everybody's tasty gin and tonics. Right, the ice machine is fixed, I really could do without playing with ice machines when it's like three degrees outside. My fingers are going blue. So I think what I should do is get the welding gloves on, A, to keep my hands warm, and B, to do some welding. And we'll work on the top of this tank. We've nearly got that cone welded on completely. Then we'll chuck it up here and get the internals welded on the bad boy. <laughs> So that's another one done, inside and out, still a bit warm over here but uh, I'll just rip off, rip off the purge bar, ah, really, really does its job this does. 
just manages to keep the gas in. Bit of copper, it gets really hot, you've got to be careful when you take it off. Very, very handy piece of kit. Right, so we'll drop this tank down on the floor, I think. Oh, look at that. And uh, yeah, we'll finish the seam off with the, uh, with the buffer wheel and the, and the sanding disc. The nicer welds on the inside, of course, and this has been flowed on the outside, and then the inside weld has reflowed certain bits, but not completely all of it, so it looks a little bit like the surface of the moon. But once we've hit that with a grinder, it'll be cool. So that's another hour, 45 minutes to an hour spent polishing this seam up. So we've got two tanks now that I've got cones and seams polished. We've got two tanks now that have got concentric reducers on. The only difference being one of them doesn't, one of them that's got the polish doesn't have the concentric reducer on yet. But I got a phone call from GC Supplies. They've got them in. So I've sent them an order. We should get them within the next couple of days. I've got one more tank to weld on the inside and outside there, and the other two are obviously going to have to wait until I put the concentric reducers on the top. There's no way that I'm climbing inside more than one tank to weld one of these on. I've got to just do it on one, and I can imagine it's going to be quite a difficult process. I can show you uh, how this seam is cleaned up. It's really, really quite sweet, man. Again, I hit it with the grinder, and just whacked a scotch Bright wheel over it, pretty much. So that's how she's come up. And you can see she's just perfectly smooth, straight across the seam. Scratches is all that's there, we've just got scratches. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do much more in terms of finishing this steel off. The externals of these tanks will be clad. And if I need to polish the internals at some point, I'll do it after the event. I'm going to run some acid through them and, went, and after, the, after the caustic and everything uh, to get them all cleaned up. And I think that may pacify the surface and be good enough. Obviously, we've got to go in there and pickle all of the welds to remove any, any, any carbon or uh, discoloration. And then once that's done, I'll really be able to get a good idea as to what all the weld seams are like. Have a close inspection with no dirt and grime on top of them. And then we'll take a view. But I don't think it's going to need too much on the inside. It's pretty much a hygienic finish. You've got to remember when they send hygienic pipe work out for you, that's just descaled. So even though I got dull polished stainless on the inside for these tanks, the next time I order any steel, I'm just going to order the descaled stuff, which is this finish. And quite frankly, that's how my other tanks were. And well, we never had any infections on the big kit, not one. So I think it's more down to your cleaning regime rather than, oh my God, there's a scratch or a pit in the surface of the stainless. Just clean it properly is all I'd say. So impressed with today's progress. It's still pretty early. Quarter past four, so I've got at least another hour before the sun goes down. If you look outside in my little wood yard there, it's still light. So I'm going to use this time wisely and maybe get this back up on the bench and do a little bit more work on it. Right, I've just taken one of these two inch street elbows, that's what they call them. A two inch RJT nut, we're going to be using RJT fittings for this build. And a two inch RJT liner and one either end. I've popped them on the fitting and I've just tacked them together. They're not completely welded. You see we've just popped some little tacks on there. And that will then give me an elbow which will allow me to get a good idea of the height of the tank before we put any legs on. So here you can see the concentric reducer coming out of the base of the tank with the two inch RJT mail part. And what you would normally have around here is a two inch RJT seal, which is basically a rubber O-ring. They're on the way, I don't have any in stock. And 
Once that seal's in place, you engage your two inch liner and tighten up your nut. And once you've got the nut on there, you can position the outlet any angle that you like. And then this is obviously what the base of the tank is going to look like. So we know that from here to here, our legs are going to have to protrude, protrude at least that at the very minimum. And then I would like to have a couple of hundred mil, maybe 200 mil to be able to put some type of bucket or tray underneath. I'm not going to have them as high as I did before um, at IVB because they were so tall it made the tanks nearly 4.2 metres high and even though we could get a bucket underneath to drain off any trouble or what have you I mean come on I'm not sort of holding 2,000 litres in this it's closer to 600 it's closer to 600 so if it can't come out of a 2 inch outlet then what's it doing in the tank in the first place you get a golf ball through here so what I'm going to do is measure from where I want the tank legs to sort of start from to where I anticipate they will finish and we might cut some 3 inch tube and maybe tack some legs onto this and just have a look. I'm just playing here a little bit uh, just to pass an hour. I don't want to really start welding inside the other tank if I'm going to have to go home soon. Hello? Hello. Peekaboo. <laughs> right, Gem's here. She's uh, come to take the keys off me. I'll give you the car key on its own then. Okay. And I've got my keys. So you're going to pick Dominic up from your mum's and you're leaving me at work. What time is it now? Half past five, four to six? About that, yeah. So I'll stop here for a couple more hours then, folks. And we'll get this leg duplicated. So that's what the leg looks like so far. We've got six legs out of that six metre piece of pipe. Okay, well we've got some legs cut, one, two, three, just like that. I'm not really at the leg stage yet, but I thought if I get them on, it's going to look pretty smart. I've got another hour or two to play with tonight, so I thought we'd cut them. So I just need to try and fit them up and get them on the tank, see if we can get them nice and square. need to put it down but I just wanted to see what she looked like stood up she looks awesome and 
that's one hull of a tank, don't you think? Yeah. So you're only having three legs on him? So three legs, it prevents rocking then. Uh, I've got quite a bit of height on that, haven't I really? Yeah, I wouldn't expect him to be that big. For the, uh, for the outlet, that's a good, good standing height that. I don't think I'm going to have the, the boil kettle that high. We might come a little bit smaller than that. We we'll go and stand next to it, Jan. <laughs> go and stand next to it for scale. Oh well, that doesn't say a lot, does it? There we go. So, how many litres are you? We we don't need to get that. <laughs> I think she looks good. And get a wobble. Watch out, some welds are hot. Pretty stable, I think. Just needs to have uh, some braces on the bottom of the feet to prevent them wobbling about and uh, some pads, some pads on the base as well. I might do it so I can get a, a trolley jack underneath and move them about. But I'm pleased with that. Looks really good. So I managed to pull the weld down on some of these and this one for instance, unfortunately for me, I just get down to the bottom and we blow out. So there's actually a hole in the bottom of the tank here. But that's all right, that's just drainage. <laughs> this one, welded up. And then the other side of the seams I haven't done. I've just done that side because Gemma's here and I wanted to, uh, she's diving out at way. Because I thought I was in your way. She's, uh, she's come to take me home. So now I thought, well, I'll do that. And then I can stand it up and weld the, uh, the rings on the top. I won't be standing up there. No. It's going to have to be laid back down again on the bench, I think. But yeah, that is something, isn't it? Right then, folks. Well, join us tomorrow for another edition of the vlog. And maybe we'll get... Maybe we'll get a little bit further with that. Maybe we'll cut some tops for it. It's quite impressive, though, isn't it? Now it's still I'm up. impressed. I'm very impressed. Yeah, we're doing it. We are doing it. Thank you.